Autism is basically a neurodevelopmental disorder, so that means something's happening in the brain and impacting development. And through that, really what's impacted, individuals with autism often have impaired social interactions, um, communication skills, repetitive behaviors. They're also impacted differently by different sensory continuums, so um, lights, sounds, things like that are impacting each child differently. Um, they're also finding out more and more that there's a real big disconnect between the mind and body. So a lot of our kids are finding out have so many great ideas and have so many thoughts and have great intent, but then there's a breakdown when it comes to the motor planning and communication. So they have these abilities, it's just a matter of getting them out. At nine months, I kind of, I think I knew. And my older son is also on the spectrum. And with him, it was very late. I didn't find out till he was 12. So with my younger one, I, I kind of started looking at everything and I just noticed some behaviors were not typical. He didn't smile a lot as a baby. He cried a lot as a baby. Um, he was a little OCD, at nine months old. I was giving him a bath and I had a bottle of soap took it from here, I used it and I put it over here. And he went and he got it and he put it back. So, that's a little different. <laughs> so that's kind of when I knew. Right. Uh, we first started noticing that our uh, son's development was not typical when he wasn't really mimicking anything that we were uh, doing until, I don't know, gosh, what, until well into to the second year. For the first I'm a, a book publisher, it's what I do for a living, so I was constantly reading books with him and he would just kind of sit next to me and stare at the books and I would go over and over again, what is this word, what is this picture, and it was just quiet. He was content, but it was just very quiet and, and it was very difficult uh, to interact with our son. Yeah, he wasn't uh, repeating words and obviously he, was, he had a speech delay. So that's how we start noticing that he wasn't developing typical. So the most common approaches to treat autism, um, there's two main approaches. Um, one is ABA, and then the other one is floor time. ABA, it's a, it, it means applied behavior analysis. As its name indicates, it's really concentrating on, on behaviors and changing the behaviors. So what the therapist would do is um, break up anything on different sets of skills and teach the skills to the child. Uh, and then we have floor time, which is what I practice. Floor time, the IR floor time, it's a much more comprehensive model in which it really understands the development of the child. So instead of just like really going for the behaviors, we go for creating a healthy development, keeping in mind the individual differences of the child. So which means anything related to their sensory system, to their communication issues, to the diet, you know, like anything that is specific to this kid, motor planning, visual spatial processing, uh, understanding that, and then using our relationship with the child to help the child develop. When, when he was officially diagnosed, he was already four. So I just went on the uh, insurance and I looked for behavior therapy and Lena's name came up and I didn't know about floor time. I just happened to, she's on my insurance, let me go see her. And when she explained everything, I was so happy. It was exactly what I was looking for. I have other friends whose children have you know, autism and I didn't want him in a structured behavior therapy. Floor time falls into the camp of the developmental relationship-based approaches. And so essentially what we're doing is through back and forth interactions, we are working on building those foundations. So we're helping a child to maintain um, regulation, to be calm and attentive through these interactions that are helping them to do that. Um, and we kind of build them up through there. Floor time is sometimes called play with a purpose. So it might look like you're just playing around, but what we're doing is in those interactions, we're teaching the child how they can maintain regulation excuse me, regulation, how they can get engagement going, work on communication skills, problem solving. So we work on all of these great capacities through interactions and by building a connection with the child, finding out what's interesting to them, 
And when we find out what's interesting to them, we follow their lead and we try to connect on their interests. And through that connection is where really the magic happens. There's a, um, there's a saying in floor time where you have to go for the gleam in the eye. And so that means you have to find out what that child loves, what's their interest. And really when there's that gleam, and it sounds vague, but when you see it, you know it. <laughs> so when you see that gleam in the eye, you know that there's learning happen, there's development occurring. I mean, such great things can happen, but it can't be through this sitting, rote, say this, do this type of thing. We want it to be meaningful for the child. I was very interested in floor time therapy because they look at the child as a whole and they meet them at their level, at their need, and kind of work around that. And I really liked that approach where you get to know the child and you see what they like and they feel comfortable. Just every, every single thing about it, I liked. <laughs> um, I found out at a meetup that website meetup and um, I just joined in to it was at the early beginning where we had no idea about autism we knew any we didn't know anybody um, so I just did it really to find support and uh, we came to the first meetup and we really liked um, Lena's and Jenny's theory so we we said we were gonna give it a try so I think the main thing that makes Flory Time different, the IR Flory Time, is that we really go for, for that emotional connection with the child. So instead of really wanting the child to do something for an external reward, we really want to have that connection with the child. So the child is the one that comes to look at us, for example. You know, like we in, in the autism world, we really talk a lot about eye contact. Uh, and then, you know, like different approaches really try to work on eye contact as getting the child to look at you. But then what we do in floor time is really through that connection with the child, through that emotion, through that, you know, like really emphasizing all the gestures and the movement and making things excited. So we do that for the child to be um, willing or to be curious. That's a better word, to be really curious to come to you in a more spontaneous way. So instead of really pushing you, the child to look at you, we really do things that are more natural so the child wants to look at you. So it's much more natural. Um, we don't push for things to happen, but we just kind of like create the conditions for the child to want to be involved, to want to come and play with you, to really nurture that part so so it's just natural development we were interested in floor time because it seemed like a very natural holistic approach to child development we had been working with some other different therapists and different types of therapies and we weren't 100 percent happy with them this really broke down step by step how a child develops and it seemed like a very natural process in a very intuitive process and that's what we were missing with some of the therapies and therapists that we were working with. Another good thing that uh, uh, we liked about floor time is that it really taught us how to interact the way that our son wanted us to interact with him and it, it really after we learned that we were able to connect better with our son. It's, it's one really wonderful thing about floor time uh, for us was that when you have a child that's not developing typically, you, you feel at a loss as a parent because most of it, you have the stereotypical idea of the child kind of being a sponge and following their mother or father around and doing every single thing that they're doing and copying them and being interested in what they're doing. And when you have a child that really doesn't show much interest in what you're doing, as a parent, I felt very terrified because I didn't know how to go into his world and help him get interested in the outside world and people and how to socialize. And that's what floor time really does. It, it gives you a tools on how to, how to reach your child where they are how to understand where they are. I mean, I didn't know anything about sensor, sensory processing difficulties, and, and I've learned through floor time, I've learned a lot about it, 
and, and then how to establish a relationship and how to get his interest. Um, when I brought him, he was having a really hard time with changes in routine. He was very rigid and he would get very frustrated and scream and melt down. So it's been a year since then and now he tells me his feelings. It, I feel angry, I feel sad, I feel tired. Um, he wouldn't do that before. He would just scream and cry and I knew something was wrong but I didn't know exactly what. Um, and he's more easygoing, he's more willing to talk to people. Before he didn't like parties, he didn't like being around a lot of people. Now we go to parties and he might kind of be by himself, but he's okay with everybody else being there. So one time you were at Dylan's house and you were, it was the summer, you were swimming? What was that? No, I wasn't swimming. I, I, my brother was swinging me and he told me to jump and I was right in the air and it was really high. Uh -huh. And I jumped and, I, and then I wasn't looking, I was like scared. So then I landed and I, I thought I landed in the pool, but I went and I landed right on this arm and I had four and I had three or four bruises on my on my um, bone. Yeah, we've, we've noticed a lot of changes uh, from floor time. Uh, joint attention is the biggest one. Our son just really wasn't interested in interacting with us, with people in general. Uh, and he's got an enormous amount of uh, joint attention right now. He's interested in what we're doing all the time. He's kind of, his social skills are emerging uh, because of floor time. But it's, it's a constant work in process. We're still learning about how to uh, expose him to good situations, how to interact with him uh, so he can progress in, in his development. I think overall uh, we've all changed ever since we started floor time and I think uh, we've all learned how to uh, connect with each other and obviously we've seen he's a lot happier, a lot happier. And so we really know that there's progress being made when we can start sustaining interactions more and more. So often um, we might meet a child and we might have an interaction for about three seconds, maybe two back and forths, and then the child leaves. And then the next time it's four back and forths and then it's five. So what we wanna do is we wanna try to sustain these back and forth interactions and really keep that connection. And soon we want the child to be initiating. We want them to be asking for more. We want them to be telling us what they wanna do. And really when they start initiating, that's when you know something incredible is happening. And every child's on a different level, but um, I think as long as each day you see a slight improvement, and I mean, it can be slight. It can be we had three back and forths, the next day four. It could be the child pulled over a chair and reached up for their favorite toy for the first time ever. So it's these really subtle things sometimes, but as long as you're looking for them, because our kids can be really subtle, but as long as we are looking for what's happening and as long as we know that child we can pretty easily tell when there's been a big developmental step and then you know it's fun and exciting to celebrate that and we have to celebrate that and let the child know that we acknowledge that and then then they want to do it more and more so it starts to have a nice little pattern i would say that when your uh, child's first diagnosed with autism it's terrifying as a parent the first step really is to get yourself in therapy to be able yeah. to deal with it. That's the first step. Yeah. And then the next step is, is I would say, floor time. It's, a, it's because the, part of the terror is the lack of understanding. People are afraid of what they don't understand. And floor time teaches you how to understand your child. And, and, and you know, one of the tenets of floor time is that any child could kind of you know, move up in functionality on the spectrum. And that's what it teaches you how to do. So it takes your fear away and you can get back to just really enjoying your child and, uh, and their growth. So through this approach, the quality of the life of the kids and the, and the parents improved tremendously as in really having this understanding of each other and that connection of each other. And I, I think many families that start working with this model start just really um, having a sense of joy 
with everything that's happening. So instead of having this pressure of wanting the child to be different, you understand the child and you see the beauty on whatever it is that they're going through and whatever it is that, that's happening. So instead of just really having this pressure of wanting your child to be different, when you start where the child is and just start connecting with the child, you know, whatever it is that we're doing, clapping hands or looking at the sky or putting the hands on the floor, if we start having this, these moments, cherishing those moments together, that on itself is quality of life. When you're just like doing something not for a purpose, but just like for, for the experience that you're having. So you kind of like take off the pressure of, oh, I need to be there, but you're just enjoying the present moment with the child. And I think those moments are so important for both for the child and for the parent, because it's just natural development, you know? So instead of just like really thinking like, oh my gosh, we gotta go to therapy and do this and, you know, get the child to do this. Many parents may have that in the back of their mind, but they're still finding that moment to just enjoy life with their kids.